We must learn to live together as brothers or perish together as fools. Martin Luther King Jr. Thanks for staying with us on Cool Digest West Day. We're joined now by legal practitioner Liberas Oshoma. Thank you very much for finding time to join us today on Cold Digest. Thank you. Mm. All right, let's start with some... Um, this um, morning. What did you say? I said, thank you for dragging me out <laughs> this morning. <laughs> and thank you for honoring the invitation. Okay. Let's start with this um, very uh, controversial and interesting update. Of course, the APC has now threatened to sue the People's Democratic Party and its presidential campaign spokesman, Femi Fanikayode, if he fails to show proofs that Professor Yemi Oshimbajo uh, it was to resign for the party's national leader, Bola Tinubu, if Mohamed Buhari wins the March 28 presidential election. Of course, APC's presidential campaign team said in a statement that it's given the PDP and Fanikayade 72 hours to either show evidence of the oath taking or retract the libelous claims. You recall that, um, of course, um, the Former governor of Lagos, Bola Tinubu, has also written a similar letter to AIT over a certain documentary, one hour long documentary being played on that channel. And they are also saying that um, it should be retracted or they are suing them some billions of naira, so to speak. Now, on the other side, spokesman for the PDP presidential campaign team, Femi Fanikayode, is also seeking 5 billion naira in damages from the National Publicity Secretary of the APC. Lai Mohammed. Now, according to him, this is as a result of a recent statement where the APC spokesman questioned Fanny Kayode, uh, Kayode's mental health. The spokesman for the PDP denied the publication as false, and his lawyers, Akbar Raji and, uh, and Co., are demanding a retraction and an apology within seven days. Now, Barrister, do you think we've been able to draw a line? between freedom of expression and what they now call hate speeches or character assassination in Nigeria? Ah, um, at this time, um, you will say, the job of a lawyer is um, it's a very controversial one. Because a lot of people will say, at ah, this time, lawyers will be smiling to the bank. Mm. And uh, head or tail is like two people dragging a cow. And the lawyers are there making the cow. And so basically that's what's happening. But um, what you have seen now, or what you're seeing rather, is um, the desperation on the side of our politicians, it's, uh, which is very, very unfair, unfortunate. Um, the mentality, the win at all cost mentality of uh, our politicians, even though they are the ones that will consistently tell you that campaigns should be issue based. But you hear them, rather the campaigns are more of a calumny and then name calling and all sorts. And so you now begin to wonder where is the role, what has that got to do with the people, basically. And rather than address, and then also you find out that these are coming because, you know, in, um, in elections here, there are basically no rules. There are no rules. The people don't demand, you know, so much from from their their political class, and so even when we say campaigns should be issue based, you still see us, the people that are asking for issue, you still see us fighting ourselves, insulting ourselves over, you know, uh, uh, what was said or what was not said. If we limit ourselves to addressing you know, what should be and how it should be, 
you we would also when they talk like this when they talk recklessly and carelessly mm. we should also be able to call them to order to say well these are not what we want to listen to and then that will also to a longer a large extent you know um, guide statements that are made are not reckless statements. But uh, for situations where you throw all um, cautions to the wind and statements that should not be credited to children mm. are coming from uh, the mouth of adults, all in the name of campaigns and elections, even though they had a um, signed pact for non violent uh, election, non um, uh, 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 issuance of hate, hate speech. And then you read on both sides of the divide, you read press statements, allegations, counter-allegations, rumors flying everywhere. And then you begin to wonder, when are we really going to get it right? Uh, right? Mm. And it's really so unfortunate. So, so unfortunate. What is the position, uh, the position of the law as regards all of this? Because at one hand, some would say there's freedom of information uh, that uh, also allows me to not disclose my source even if I no, make the only, the only the only the only man the only organizations that are protected uh, your your organizations it's the media the media yeah. uh, you know uh, because um, provided you can authenticate that information and so you have a right you are you are protected you have immunity not to disclose your source of information but information must be true Okay. You don't just publish anything in the media and then say, I have a right not to disclose. That's where the law of libel comes in. You know, that's why you hear people saying, we're going to court. This other one says, I'm going to court. I'm going to sue you for 20 billion. I'm going to sue you for 5 billion. I'm going to sue you for 2 billion. The way the billions are flying, you know. And <laughs> it's, it's, it's really, you know, it's sad. And sometimes, even though we laugh at these things, but it's, it's a serious thing. So, and then this also calls to question the transparency in governance in this part of the world. How transparent is governance? You find that activities of government is run nocturnally, where people begin to, you know, rely heavily on rumor. And so, like they say, when the information is not forthcoming, rumor tribes and once rumor tribes even intellectuals are turned to convey your bed and that's why you hear media will say uh, rely we, we 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 gathered from a reliable source okay. or a source in the presidency mm -hmm. or somebody who claimed an anonymity or oh i have a friend who is close to this person who said this and that and that oh this meeting was held at so and so time oh so and so person signed a, 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 a resignation letter if all of these, election time, definitely you take your time to begin to dig into information about your opponent. But this information also, there are rules guiding your, your, your obtaining information from your opponent. But the how situation rarely, where you begin to even mm. tap telephone lines of your opponent mm. simply because you want to know what they are doing is mm -hmm. wrong. How really does this work? Because if the media has uh, that protection, okay, I can protect my source. But then at the other end, you, have see, you, you hear the APC talking about a particular documentary running on a particular TV station. And then... That, that's a paid advert. That's a paid about. advert. Yes. Does that station have the right to also protect the sponsor of that advert? No, no, no. The sponsor here is not... I mean, in some... If it's a paid advert, the spo you, don't, you don't begin to say, look, I, I have a right to protect the sponsor. It's, it's clear, it's even in your books that this uh, documentary was paid for and it was paid for by so and so person. And then so, that is why when you are suing, you sue the television station who will now say, well, we, we, we have a, an indemnity from the sponsor. He, because in most cases, what you people do is to ask for, you know, an indemnity uh, letter from the sponsor of that document in the event that the man says, this the content you know, um, Ross Fowles of the ethic or that the content, you know, the, uh, are offensive. And so, I will, you know, any claim against me, I will hold you responsible. And so, in that case, you don't begin to say, well, um, I will not disclose the sponsor. 
what you're doing also by that is also running foul of the law. But so does it now mean that we... If you we, say you are not mm -hmm. going to disclose the sponsor, it means you're taking absolute responsibility for whatever came out of that documentary. There's an, an NBC code as well and conduct. It uh, has been violated mm -hmm. with impunity most times. But you know, that's what happens. I listened to some, some mm -hmm. analysts also call them um, certain persons' names, throw cautions to the wind. Even people you think should know. You know, now it is so, it, it's so popular to come on air and insult all, you know, persons thinking that is what Nigerians want to hear. These are some of us that are demanding for accountability and issue base. We also leave the realm of the issues and begin to call names. Is there a situation whereby you really can break laws and go away with it tonight? Like yeah, because um, Fidel Castro of Cuba said in a state of lawlessness, it is illegal to be law-abiding. Mm. And so where you, what you are saying now is, uh, you know, all parties on both sides of the divide breaking the law. And so if you now begin to make arrests, they'll say, well, your man broke the law too and he was not arrested, and so why should I be the one to, you, to be prosecuted? So basically, that's what you're saying. It's a hopeless so that situation people, that cannot be corrected. It, no, it can't be corrected. How? That is why you see, you see parties now resort to um, litigation to say, look, I have been wronged, and I think I have a right to, to, to redress here, until the court begin to make pronouncement and say, look, these languages should not be used. They are foul language. And so for that, we feel you have defamed this person and you are liable to pay that person compensation. What confidence? Really? Next time, when you mm. want to make statements like that, you, or think, when twice. You're, mm. you think twice because you, 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 you know that there are repercussions. But what confidence do we have in the courts? Because we also are aware that it might take forever to get... Um, <laughs> we made it so. To get that done. We made it so. I, I tell you that it, people who ordinarily should be the protectors of um, these judicial institutions are the ones damaging it the most. Behind every bribery allegation against a judge, there's a senior advocate who is a conveyor belt. It's not small lawyers that they use. The big lawyers, the senior advocates, are the ones that will convey the, 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 the bribe money to these judges. Yeah. And so, at the end of the day, you find out that cases that will enrich our legal jurisprudence, cases that would enhance our democratic norms and, 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 and virtues are intentionally warehoused in court without moving forward or backward. And so at the end of the day, because it is what the courts say the law is, that is the position of the law. Okay. That is why we can only interpret and say, from my position, from my understanding, this is what it is. And then the other lawyer says, no, from my own understanding, this is what I believe it is. It is now for the courts to look at both positions and say, having listened carefully to both arguments, mm. I have come to the conclusion, and also reading the words and letters of the said law, this is the intent of the law. Also having regard to the rules of interpretation and all the existing, you know, ancillary laws. But when that is intentionally deprived of the people, through corruption, bribery, and all sorts, you are denied the enrichment. If not for the Court of Appeal interpretation of Section 188 of the 1999 Constitution as regarding impeachment, we wouldn't have been where we are today. I bet you most governors would have been gone by now also. Hmm. But because of the court's interpretation that no, because even some lawyers before then believed that for you to, that once impeachment is concluded, because by virtue of subsection 10, that the court had no power to query it. And the Court of Appeal in its wisdom said, no, you cannot just deny us of the jurisdiction without complying with subsection 1 to 9. There are laid down procedures that must be followed for you to invoke subsection 10. And that became what the law is. Okay. And so now it became very difficult for you to just impeach a governor. You have to follow the procedures. You have to look at it clearly. In the same vein, the only way out of all of this is for the court again, once again, to throw aside sentiment, to throw aside partisan politics, yeah. and rise to the occasion and look at all of these issues dispassionately and timelessly handled 
uh, 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 dispose of these um, defamation cases so that when next politicians are making statements like that, you will think twice. It happens in the times of our law. Have you also considered the level and gravity of allegations thrown at each other between the two major parties? Uh, is this the price that we pay for democracy, or it's just a reflection of the level of moral decadence of this the is society. A mockery, this is a mockery of democracy. This is not, you can't, you, you imagine the countries we borrow democracy from, you know, watching us. Yes, they do the same thing also, but not at this rent. What they do, they, all, they go all out through legal channels to begin to source for information. If you are saying a man signed a document um, or took an oath to resign from office. If it's a document, if there are photographic evidence, as you are addressing a press conference, you show these documents, mm. you show the photographic evidence, and then let the whole world know. That is why in the advanced countries, when you are going into things like that, mm. you are very careful because you don't know where it will get to. But here, it is easy for a campaign organization to just sit down and then they wake up one day and say, uh, what do we do now? What do we throw into the media now? Uh, let's look for something. Oh, um, this man um, had a, a child out of wedlock, and so he's morally bankrupt to run for an office. And uh, you know, you know that we, the media will call us to begin to debate these issues. <laughs> and because we debate them, you know, we give them that attention, undeserved attention. You know, so what we do, what the court should do to set the record straight now is to begin to reroute us into the practice. The norm, we, we are so, you find out that the, because the worst of us are ruling the best of us. Mm -hmm. So you find this worst of us resorts to any and everything just to remain in power, to remain in office, both at the state and the federal level. And so a man who does not know his right from his left will resort to anything. You know, he based for him there are no rules. I am the rule, and I am the law, and so what I say should go. But we should not let that happen because we are not um, in the Stone Age. So that is where the court comes in, and then our, our senior advocate should please forget about these frivolous applications. We are trying to strengthen this. The governors at various levels, at the federal level also, are trying to strengthen the dispensation of justice system in Nigeria. Even with the court rules, the front loading, and we should f jettison all forms of, you know, um, frivolous application and also have it at the back of our mind that with this, we are enriching our jurisprudence. Mm -hmm. We are passing something to our generations yet unborn. In and your... also, quickly, mm -hmm. you'll find out that in Amechi's case, um, Amechi and Omeha, that put a stop to unnecessary um, imposition of candidate and substitutions of candidate. When the Supreme Court put its foot down to say no, this man, you do, you won the election, but you were not the right candidate. Mm -hmm. The right full candidate was wrongly substituted. And so now, if you want to substitute a candidate, you will think twice because at the end of the day, you might just substitute a candidate and at the end of the day, he won't win any, the election. Even if he wins, you know, there will be a problem. The election might just uh, be, be an only court. Let's take a short break here to bring in some commercials and we'll be back with more. Also, of course, we'll open the phone lines to get opinions from you out there. Stick around. Don't go away. Has it been a difficult task for you to purchase exquisite, classic, durable and sturdy furniture that will last the test of time? Here is good news for you. Purchase high quality furniture for your household, offices, hotels and schools at Prince Interior Furnishing and Furniture Company Limited. Office address, Goshen Plaza, Showroom 28, Kubo Furniture Market, AYA, Nyanya Road, Abuja, Telephone 0803-119-1 or 09291-7482. Email princeemeka240 at yahoo.com. Info at princeinterior.com. Website www.princeinterior.com. Purchase your furniture at Prince Interior Furnishing and Furniture Company Limited. Classic, strong, exquisite.
Thanks for joining us again. The phone line is open when you call in and they to turn down the volume of your TV set so we can have a crystal clear communication. And don't forget that there is a delay, a few seconds delay between what we say here and what you hear on your Star Times device. So you want to ensure that your TV set is mute. Now, let's um, also find out because in your opening remarks, you talked about the fact that the people accepted this looks as if Nigerians also enjoy discussing this. That, that, we... That's where mm. I would say, um, as a caution to your callers also, that we should not behave like these people okay. that we are, we are condemning by mm. resorting to name-calling also and trying to talk like that. Or perhaps, will it be true that um, every nation has the quality of leadership that it deserves? Yes, to some extent, but this one, Nigerians don't deserve this kind of leadership, but, but because we have uh, taken the back seat too, for too long, we have um, you know relegated our rights to these persons for too long, mm. and so it is convenient for us to sit down uh, in beer parlors, uh, saloons, and then um, uh, stadiums and TV stations like this to begin to discuss the kind of government that we want. But at every opportunity where we are allowed to participate in the process. We, we still sit, you know, at the back bench and allow all of these persons to. You know, I told somebody recently, not too long ago, I said um, I have my doubts about the two uh, main candidates. You know, they have really not, um, you know, clicked it for me. Mm. And then I might have, I might be looking at, you know, one of the other um, uh, contestants. And the next thing he tells me is that, Oh, they will not win. I said, so what it means, what you're telling me now is that if you decide to, you know, take a shot at this office, because you don't belong to a popular party, I shouldn't support you. I want to stand with you even if I'm standing alone. Mm. And so that's where Nigerians also get it wrong. They tell you, oh, this party does not have structures. It is the people that makes the structure. Mm. And so once the people say, look, we want to queue behind this person, irrespective of the fact that the party is known or unknown. But we believe in him, we believe in his ability. Mm -hmm. These big parties will now know that, look, Nigerians... Just a minute, Barrister. Let's take this call. Hello, good morning. Good morning, please. Welcome to Call Digest. What's your name? Yeah, my name is Maureen, and I am calling you from Anambra. From Anambra. Maureen from Anambra. Please go ahead with your contribution. But my name is Maureen. I am calling you from London. We got that. Go ahead with your contribution, Maureen. Okay. Uh, please, uh, I want to draw the attention of the moral stakeholders we have in this country. Okay? All right. The moral stakeholders we have in this country are really the, pro the main problem. It's one of the contentions that the challenges we have in this country. Because all these fake TV. I recall the last time I, I, I tried contributing when somebody was saying, commending, uh, there is no airtime for us to commend the soldiers' victory. But then, uh, we didn't consider the space and the, 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 the tariff to pay on safety. I want to believe that this country got it all wrong when the moral stakeholders decided to sell their conscience, play better, more politics than the politicians themselves. Uh, on Tuesday this morning, I listened. I think this particular young man was on air there, where a, a leader, I don't know whether it's a or a traditional ruler, was saying uh, whether uh, uh, the guy is here or the guy is not here. Nothing will happen. Uh, that they even when they talk about the postponement of the election, that nothing happened. You see, these people that they have no shame anymore. Now, these people that are posting this speech, don't they have pastors and bishops? That fits to them. I don't want to call me. It's rather unfortunate. These people have damaged the morale, the size, the ethics and value of the children of this society. I'm a moral crusader. I'm not a politician. Sometimes it becomes so nauseating thinking of coming out on election day. My worry and my question is where are these stakeholders, moral stakeholders, the clergy, eh, that welcome these politicians and their children? Can they, for, for Christ's sake, warn them about treating what they go to earn for me? We all got it wrong when our morals went there and went home I have no respect for any of these men of God anymore in this country. I don't think we go to their church. I don't patronize them because I wish every day I see some of these people 
He will never call these people to order. And say, please, let us stop. Let us go to this decree. It has gone back. A leader, a leader, a society leader came out this morning to say whether the guy is sacked or not, that considering the consequences, that nothing will happen. You can imagine. It's all right, Maureen. That particular man chooses. That's all right, Maura. Thank you very much for your contribution from Anambra. Will it, will it be right to uh, outrightly say that um, religious leaders are not doing enough at this time? I agree completely with Maureen. It's unfortunate that um, our cultural leaders, our religious leaders also have failed us. And they close their eyes to the moral issues in the society and tell you they are dwelling strictly in the spiritual. You cannot build spiritual without building morals. Can build spirituality without building morals, and so they are supposed to mirror the society. They are supposed to direct, you know, some of these things. But when they they jettison their calling and resort to, you know, um, mad chase for money, you find out that, that everything, any and everything, can be thrown at them. And they tell you it's the house of God and the place of worship is a hospital for sinners and not um, a home. For the righteous and so everybody's welcome but if everybody even though we agree everybody's welcome there are rules you know of engagement in that same place where everybody's welcome you don't come there and then some people even had, had, had turned this our religious houses to campaign grounds it is during elections like this that you hear them say oh he's uh, one of us he attends this church or oh, the geo or the bishop had a uh, endorsed him and so we don't need to scrutinize him. Is it literally wrong for any religious leader to endorse anyone? When, Have they lost the right to do that? When you when are endorsing, you don't, you, when you are endorsing, endorse us. If political you godfathers can vote, endorse, vote. what happens to spiritual you have godfathers? Only, you have only one mm. vote. You have only one vote. Endorse. If I say I'm endorsing a candidate, I'm endorsing my that candidate for myself. I can only sell the ideas and manifestos of that candidate to whoever I decide to talk to. But not just sit down and believe that everybody I know because I have endorsed that person based on my perception mm -hmm. that every other person no, must Lord. follow me without necessarily just you know, assessing Hello. the situation Let's take the way I have sex. Hello, good morning. Hello, good morning, Mr. Anthony. Welcome to Call Digest. What's your name? My, my name is Kominet Aruna, calling from Bina. From Mina, please go ahead with your contribution, Comrade Haruna. To me, to me, is the norms and values of the society has been tampered with it. If not, no, but no, no any politician, politician will come out and say anything to like me and God, 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 To me, we need to go back to our, to our traditional rulers. They should, they should do the right thing at the right time because this country, we need them. They should call this our politician back and sit them down and tell them there is no undo or die affair. Please, this country needs to stick together. It's all right. Please. Thank you very much. No, I'll you. And thank you. Thank you very much, Comrade Aruna, for your contribution from me there. But, you know, we keep hearing about this norms and values. You know, of course, uh, Maureen also touched on the role of um, cultural and religious leaders. What happens to that basic institution called the family? Because um, most of these people who are representing political parties are grown-up men who have children. And I'm beginning to wonder what happens when their children hear the quality of things they say in the name it's, of election it's, area. It's like uh, what somebody described as you come home and you tell your children never lie to anybody mm. or you spank your child for lying and then the next day the man is watching TV <laughs> and he sees his father deceiving people all in the name of politics and that's why they are quick to tell you do what I say not what I do you know and so also this trickles down to the family and you find out that in the society today, the values gradually have been eroded, even to, down to our community. Now you get chieftaincy title not on the basis of merit, but, mm. but how much you have. Mm. Chieftaincy title are like, um, before now, are like awards from the community, recognizing your contribution to the community or to humanity. Now it's paid for. Now it is paid for. Hello? And then Hello? You, 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 so everybody Hello? wants... Hello, good morning. Hello? What's your Hello? name? And where are you calling Hello? from? Hello? 
We can hear you. What's your name and where are you calling from? I'm um, making Khalid calling from Kano. I didn't get your name. I'm making Khalid call from, calling from Kano. All right, please go ahead with your contribution. Hello? Go ahead with your contribution. Yes. Hey, we just want to know about this election postponement that people are talking about. We are we hearing from, from Angle that the election will not work, that the Indian government will come over, and we should we in Nigeria, we want this thing to be done. And for talking about it, there's not there's not the bad. We are getting tired, we are tired of this thing. So please, they should help us, let this election hold. That's all, right. all I have to say. Thank you very much for your contribution from Kanu. And that will be our last caller on the show today. Let's wrap it up this way because um, it boils down to the people. As elections are just um, around the corner, it's about people going out to vote. You talked about um, oh, someone you were speaking with who believes that some other candidates would not win. Another part of it is also the faith in the system. There is this popular belief that votes do not count in Nigeria. Do you foresee a change from the status quo? Yeah, we all know votes do not count. And then um, for the first time when Jega came in 2011, some people to a large extent said, this election we knew, even though there were manipulations, but to a large extent votes counted. And then subsequently the staggered election, at every election we all say, look, Jega had taken a step further. Mm. And then right from two years back, he'd been consistently talking about the use of card readers to ensure that you eliminate multiple voting and to eliminate um, fraud in election and to ensure transparency. They had their problems, definitely, uh, logistic problems, but we can see genuine efforts on the part of you know, the institution to ensure. I had, a call, I had cause to complain when I didn't get my PVC, you know, but we see genuine effort on the part of this organization to making things right. Mm. But now you hear desperation on the part of politicians also. This goes to show that all the while, it is the politicians that never wanted, you know, things to be okay. Mm. That is why they turn around to complain to us that, oh, we need to make things okay, things are not okay. But when things are seemingly okay, you hear them complain, let us go back to status quo. For this election, I don't see, if you like, let all of them go to court. They like, let them go hire 100 senior advocates. I don't see how we will not use the card readers in this election. And I don't see how Jega will not conduct this election. And also, I don't see how our votes will not count. The school of thought from other uh, uh, opinion makers would be that why experiment a major election with a PVC reader? Why not? Um, there were times when we had staggered elections. Why didn't you come up with that idea and then experiment it on the field so we can see how it really goes? I agree with you, but it's too late in the day for you to begin to complain about that experiment. The man started this long ago that we're going to use card reader. He's been shouting. And nobody complained. It's all right. Do you think, if not the fact that for the first time you have a formidable opposition, that the ruling party will be complaining about card readers? They won't. But for now that they are complaining, it means that something right had been done. It means there are actually steps to rectify the process that had been so bad. And so that is why you hear somebody say, no, let us go back to the status quo. At what point? Even if you tested the card readers at the standard election, these same people will still look for one of their excuses to complain. That, yes, they were tested, they didn't work properly. How come they will, how are you sure that they will work well in all the... Let's, let's start from somewhere. Well, Liberal Sashima is a legal practitioner as well as a public affairs analyst. Thank you very much for joining us today. My pleasure, Alice. Thank on you. Call Digest. A big thank you to all of our callers. Keep the calls coming. You can also follow us on Twitter at Call Digest Live. The show continues tomorrow, God willing, at 9 a.m. I am Nifemi Ogunsoye. Don't forget, a new dawn is coming for Nigeria. You and I are the midwives. Don't go away.
We must learn to live together as brothers or perish together as fools. Martin Luther King Jr. You can now watch Core TV News live from anywhere in the world on our website www.coretvnews.com. Click on Live TV on our website and watch us live. And welcome to Core TV Primetime News. To follow us on Twitter, click on Twitter icon on our website. And Facebook, click on the Facebook and YouTube to see all our previous news production. You can also watch us live on YouTube. Click Core TV. Live space, then news. Core TV News, a 24-hour news station.